Hello everyone and thank you for coming to my channel. That is Deb Chanel's 48's World. Okay, it is Sunday and if you know what I know, if you watch The Real Housewives of Atlanta, <laughs> child, it was a hot mess and I mean in a good way. I could not get enough of Mark speaking his truth. I couldn't get enough of Candy Burris speaking her truth on subject matters they co-stars or however you want to see them. I was so glad. Hallelujah. Yes, I was so glad. Candy has finally, or she is finally, I want to say realizing, but it's another word I want to use, but I, I can't even think about it right now. It's not coming to my frame of mind. But to put it lightly, Candy is figuring out that she has unleashed a purr insane woman a non-caring woman a woman who wants to be seen and uh heard and she's gonna do any and everything to put the spotlight on her yeah sometime i can you more candy looked like she wanted to slap this shit out of her okay she was so furious at kenya and her antics this episode and even cynthia wasn't even here for her she wasn't here for her when she was trying to pick at nini and the card and the little spread of crackers and cheese and, and sandwiches she brought out or you know stuff to make sandwiches out of they like the meat the luncheon meat honey candy looked like she wanted to slap the shit out of her and cynthia looked like she wanted to uppercut her and i was here for it yes i was here for it i'm like oh the tides are turning y'all both wanted her back on the show and guess what she is turning tricks on y'all left and right and and she don't even care she even smirked a little when ken was trying to get her together after kenya knew that she was going to basically be calling her out she didn't want ken to get really upset and loud so she pulled her to the side so let's go over here let's talk about this but it wasn't nothing to talk about candy shut her down okay and told her she was foul she was just that in the third candy got so mad at her candy walked away and i was like okay okay candy ain't no fool i mean i never knew or took her as a fool <laughs> however she's had her moments that made me think like Candy, this, you need to get into this situation. You need to get into that ass a little bit more. But it seems like she is definitely waking up and the tides are turning. Because she got so mad she had to go find her husband Todd at that little um, party Cynthia was having to um, introduce everybody to her wine cellar event or whatnot. I was like, that's right, honey. That is right. Get them straight. Get them together. But she, she could... It's almost like Candy wanted to cry. And you know when people that are very even-tempered, when something gets them upset real bad and they get to crying out of nowhere, you better dodge. You better run for cover because, honey, baby, it's going to be a situation that you ain't going to be ready for. All right? It's just like a cannon. Or no, not a cannon, a volcano erupting. And you ain't got to the major explosion part. And that's pretty much where Candy was at the time. And I was like, go baby, go baby, go baby. Serve it up to Miss Kenya, Miss Kenya. Because Mark's going to take it home. Yes, honey. But let's get on into the episode. Because I done gave y'all the two MVP players. And that was Marlo Hampton today. And Kenya Moore, not Kenya Moore, I'm sorry. Ooh, let me retract that. Um, the MVP players today were Candy Burris, Marlo Hampton, and none other than Mark Daly. Yes, honey, shutting Kenya down on all faces of this God Green's earth, honey. And Cynthia, she just out there in yonder land, but she kind of got upset uh, with the tea that Kenya was trying to throw her that she feels in her body, her spirit, that Mike's going to propose. And what if he didn't? Then you would have post Cynthia, you know, just shattered okay because she's looking for the big payday and you trying to you know take that big thrill away from her and oh honey as we just got to get to my part because i'm tearing too long but as we get into um the phases that they wanted to take us to which we didn't really care for or uh, at least hell i didn't care for it we had mike out there with his three young girls um uh, including uh no way we're gonna just put her as his young daughter as well okay just for edification's sake or just for the hell of it all right 
they had their helping um their dad pick out Cynthia's new ring that uh she uh wants to flaunt because she's been so thirsty somebody need to get her some drinking water uh drinking water so might thank you for going on giving her that drinking water because honey she was so thirsty 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 uh, and i just glad you quenched her thirst okay so they're going around now trying on rings and this that and a third cute scene but i was wondering is those kids meaning the two girls mark's ch biological children it looks like that oldest one looks just like him the other one not so much so i'm thinking she taking after her mother so did mark have a baby by each one of his wives because you know he's married twice because they don't look like they favor each other the two um baby girls so um, Y'all know, y'all have some fact history about him and his girls and his ex-wife. Let me know. Are they from the same mother or they, he he got two different girls from two different mothers? Okay, I just want to know. Because it seemed like that the latter child or maybe the youngest child out of nowhere, the oldest child, and you know, whatever. Don't seem like she cared too much for one way or the other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, mm. And the oldest girl looked like, She's a daddy's girl all the way every day. Okay, so no way you might want to watch out for her. Because just because y'all step, don't make you going to come any close to her dad that she feels you need to. I'm just saying, I just got that little feeling, that little vibe, all right? But um, we leave that situation. We go to Dennis and Portia. Um, talking about upgrading her. It's, that's a whole mess. Let's just not even talk about Portia and Dennis uh and their relationship or how it's gonna f uh fester or manifest itself because we already know she don't got back with that joker he um she done forgave him in a sense she ain't trying to like look for nobody else new so god bless her and her nuptials and however it spins off we ain't gonna talk about her the rest of the show except for she tried to throw shade at nene because Nene, I'm pretty sure Cynthia invited her, but she knew it was a chance she wasn't coming. Or maybe Cynthia didn't invite her. I don't know. It's neither here nor there. But um, Marlo brought a little, what do you call it, a party greeting of a lunch, lunch and meat tray and crackers and cheese and, and a nice car from Nene. Because I thought it was from Marlo at first when she came to the wine event. Um, Cynthia was having to open up um, Cynthia Bailey's wine cellar um little restaurant she got a little wine house she she's hosting out there um for business sake ventures or whatever i thought marlo bought it but come to find out nini bought it so let's give nini a round of applause for being the bigger person for you know just acknowledging her here or their friend and her new adventures on starting another business uh, venture that hopefully would be lucrative so I'm like okay Nene I know Marlo probably had to talk you into it but that's okay it looked good on both of y'all parts so um let's just go into the situation with Cynthia's at some coffee shop over there in Grant Park area that's kind of near her and her wine cellar thing you know another here nor there anyway Marlo comes strolling down you know the little I don't know the area or whatnot a sidewalk to up to the coffee shop she wanted to meet marlo at because she wanted to get some tea she wanted to get around talking about who is the snake in the grass who is the informant who is the traitor among us <laughs> and she pretty much done uh exed out yavana and now she's looking at marlo and i'm like girl marlo ain't got time for that she gonna come for you either way and she gonna put it out on front street just like she asked you was you a lesbian <laughs> and I was like go ahead marlo go ahead i mean she just slid that right on in i wasn't even waiting for anything to come out like that of marlo's mouth but she slid it on on in now i'm like she slid home when we playing baseball or something to that effect you know the man be running be done made first second third like hit a home run and then he slides into that uh that, but at last base he need to slide to and they say safe and stuff Milo did that honey she slid that right on in that conversation her and Cynthia were trying to have but if like n not neither him nor there this conversation Cynthia was having I'm like girl as far as we know Tanya Sam's could be the snake <laughs> you know what I'm saying now who cares really it's gonna come out and I can wait for it 
I sure can, because it don't make no difference. Everybody talk about everybody on this show. You just only have a few people, such as Marlo, who has to come out and tell you, yeah, I talked about you. I said it. Let me tell you exactly what I said in case somebody got it wrong. All right? So she was the only true G that comes out. Candy don't really hide anything if it's put on Front Street. She pretty much says it as well. The only people that seem to throw it out there and try to take it back, as if you didn't notice, they were the one that threw it out there. Which pretty much Cynthia, Eva, um, Nene can be a little wish wishy washy here and there, you know what I'm saying? But when she get mad, she'll just tear it all in there, and then she just tell you I did it. We don't talk about King Moore. She throw it out there every day and all day and that like she ain't did shit. You know, like she gonna play the, the victim, as it always. Uh, makes itself known that that's just what she does and i have become to like her lesser and lesser on this show even though she got a whole lot of followers that try to amp her up and saying she's doing this and she's doing that but you know we got to look at the demeanor that she's giving us on each of these episodes that she's playing you wouldn't want no good friend in your life in your real life doing that to you let alone trying to do it to you on a reality tv show that's half scripted half fake and half embellished but you supposed to be like like four fat tires with that person down for them and then you're going to treat them the way you treat them so mm, moving off that situation just making a, a, a valid point uh to the matter but like i said um she tells marlo meaning cynthia that you know i'm just trying to figure out who is this uh thieving type person that's sitting out here you know taping my conversations and stuff and she goes on to say what candy said then nene said i'm like girl why you just didn't say it? hey it's on the streets and it's in our uh circle that somebody's been taping me and i just want to know is it you girl have you been taping our conversations when i'm talking about nene or, or any other girls girl and, of course, Milo looked at her like, you don't even need an answer for that. Because, of course not. I didn't do it. But she gone and looked at her like she crazy. Like, girl, I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for all that simpleness. You forget who I am. I come with the tea, drop the tea, make the tea, brew the tea, and then pull up the tea. Girl, you kidding? And then wash the dishes afterwards. Okay. So, uh... It was that to me that whole scene was just nonchalant because really Marlo didn't do anything but make me laugh when she, um, she was trying to tell Cynthia that she didn't care for um, Kenya interrupting her event the way she did and she didn't like the relationship that Kenya always looked like she's always trying to punt Cynthia you know because we remember when Cynthia had her Bailey barbecue or whatever and Kenya got upset with Eva and this, that, and third. She couldn't prove her point. So she was trying to, you know, talk over Cynthia and bring Cynthia uh, in the situation of a past beef that she had with Eva because she couldn't get Eva on the, the first point of uh, saying she had bad energy. That was known that Cynthia had did that mess or spoke that mess out in the atmosphere. And people just went with it. And, um... She couldn't get that on Eva, so she called herself. Going to talk about how Eva treated Cynthia and spreading lies about a man that she was dating on the show is really paid for hire and this, that, and the third. I'm like, see, Kenya will never stay on task when they on her. She got to bring up other people's shit and, and try to make, you know, a stance on it and try to be uh, bullying somebody about it. I mean, she just get on my damn nerves now. Kenya really does or what she's giving me. And I'm not talking about the Kenya that's outside, you know, living her life. I'm not talking about the Kenya that's uh doing things out in the community. I'm talking about Kenya on this show and what she's giving us. And it's just poor fuckery. Okay? And I'm sick of her. Sick of her. I'm like, why did y'all bring her back? Why did y'all bring her back? Other than, you know, creating drama ratings and that's what people want to see but to say she gonna be one of my friend candy i hope you learn honey she don't keep secrets so you need to stop telling secrets cynthia do you not see what she's doing to you as well something that's supposed to be a surprise and very you know uh spontaneous can you just bust your bubble and just went out there and say oh i think mike gonna propose and all of this and can you looking at her i mean candy looking at her like really bitch really okay so anyway um uh, just moving on from that whole subject marlo pretty much had told her girl you gotta watch your bag you gotta be you know on point with these women all day every day he'll be on point with me because you never know when i might come out and slide and say some shit sh slick shit on you but it's no it's no pun intended but if you ever need help i got your back girl and she was um pretty much saying well i know people don't understand me and king's relationship with this that and third we're like sisters she said honey mm -hmm. she said yes yeah, just like you 
you get Nene together, not in public, but in private, and just that thing. And, and Marlo said, say, uh-uh, baby. If Nene came to my house acting all crazy and just that third thing, she won't tell me something up in my house. No, that would be another different story. And she wouldn't even try that because she know me. So, but on your excuse of letting Kenya get all in your business telling you what to do inside your household. And you sitting up there taking it. She said, girl, I take her for you. <laughs> Like, go ahead, my love. Go ahead, because somebody need to take up for Cynthia because she ain't grown no legs where she's standing on her own. Yes, she ain't. Maybe next season she'll give us a little something about her becoming Mrs. C. Hill. Okay. Uh, but whatever. But um, she was like, no, in this sense. So she knew Marla was throwing some slick shade at her. She said, well, I ain't going to be stupid. I ain't going to look stupid on this camera. I'm going to say something to get back. So she told Marla, just, you know, don't worry about her. Worry about laying her wigs down at the end of her table, whatever, and doing whatever she needed to do. I like, oh, excuse me. Okay, Cynthia, that was okay, but you ain't have to bring up the lady hair and her wigs and all like that. Now, she ain't saying nothing about your hair wigs. She just told you about your demeanor and how you let people run all over you. But that's a known thing throughout this social media world and what you've been giving us since you've been on The Real Housewives of Atlanta for season one. All up to season 12. Now, you want to sit like you want to grow some more legs and stand on them? Mm, okay, keep trying. Keep trying. We, we hoping and wishing and praying for you that you get that, um, what you call it? Get that backbone, but, you know, I don't know, girl. I don't know. But moving on from that situation, um, she was pretty much telling Cynthia that it was nothing to really talk about, mainly because, um, how you can see it, um, she wasn't saying anything about Nene that it was worth recording. <laughs> so she sat down that whole situation. But we're going to go on to Todd. Todd and Ken are out there visiting some little house that done rena been renovated out to be a business type of commercial property. And he wants to make it the sec well, the third location for the OLG, but it's Ole. Uh, Mexicano, G, or oil, I, I don't know. Candy tried to explain it to her in, her in her confessionals, but it didn't quite make sense, okay? It didn't make sense to her. It sure didn't damn make no sense to me. So, anyway, we roll on. We get into the building. It definitely needs some work to be reconstructed into something. I don't know. Like I said, he wants to make it a Mexican restaurant. Then she goes on to getting in his ass and all this and trying to tell him, you know, you have all these different properties. Uh, this this particular property had been sitting here for seven or eight months. Nothing's been done with it. You want to have another lease on something. Uh, you bought this 18-wheeler trailer. I still ain't got the gist of that. And we got... We got revenue running out the house. We needed to run back in and with interest, baby. Okay, that's what we do over here. I move in silence, but I make deals happen. And I don't completed all my deals for the year. And what the hell are you doing? Okay, so she was getting on his ass, child. I was like, go ahead. Go ahead, Candy. Go ahead, Candy. Go ahead, Candy. And like I said, uh, it's been a situation with them for six years. Mama Joyce chimed in on it and this, then third about, you know, this man is eating off you. He ain't eating off his cell. And, you know, Candy did had, you know, had some in the tablets, whatnot, saying that she uh, pretty much told Todd to quit his job, come be with her. She'll make him a millionaire. <laughs> Oh. But Todd, it don't got too much in debt already. We're going to say $660,000 worth of debt between all his little uh, business adventures. And Ken is feeling some kind of way. She's saying they don't really have a personal life no more. It's just strictly business. They talk about business. They argue about business. It's business, business, business. And she's feeling kind of lackluster that he has definitely not been towing his share. Uh, as far as the business aspect and uh, and as the loving aspect, you know what I'm saying? Getting that loving time in. And I'm like, honey, when you got him spending $660,000 worth of uh, property, ain't nothing being done with it. Really? No. <laughs> it ain't no loving going on nowhere. Because this brother done gave me a headache, okay? And then I got two children. I had to think about one that's acting like she already grown. And she telling me when she get out, she ain't coming back. And I'm like, mm -hmm, I don't believe it because she's going to stack her coins and your coins too. 
to again because she's going to make sure she ain't got to come back deal with Todd in any form or fashion, okay? But th that's just a hot mess. But I was, I, I really like what Candy was giving me. She's like, I'm here to help my husband. I'm here to give him a leg up. But damn, I want to see some re revenue. I want to see something coming in. I see a lot of shit going out. But I don't see nothing that's coming in. And we need to handle this situation before I be in the red. And then I'm going to be red and fed up and ready to slap somebody up in this camp. Okay? And it ain't going to be me. It ain't going to be the kids. But I'll be looking straight up at my husband. Okay? But anyway, um, moving on from that little cute situation. Uh, Candace spilling her truth and Todd looking like a little nut up there. Like, well, you saying you want me to do this? Well, you saying you want me to do that? And when I try, and I, you know, need the money. Well, I'm like, that's what she talking about, Candy. What, I mean, Todd, Todd, where's your money? You know, you're spending all her money, baby. So we want you to grow. We want you to be good. And we want you to be prosperous. But it don't seem like you can get out of her shadow to do these things. I mean, damn, I'm like, huh, finish one project before you start another one. Like, what are we doing with that recent project that you just started with the tractor trailer? Are we out there hauling trucks, livestock, people, moving people around? Okay, what are we doing with the damn transfer truck out there? Is it hitting the road? Is it going coastal to coastal? What is it doing, baby? What is it doing? So I'm sure they can have a whole conversations, days conversations just on that last purchase he made with transfer trailer trucks. But we're going to move off that situation, okay? Then we got um, Cynthia's checking on her event hall where she's having it next door to where she already has something. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, fact checkers, get in there with me. Um, what's his name? Peter had found that uh, whole space for her and purchase it uh, when they were married that she can do something with it don't know what they were going to do with it at the time but he thought it was a very good lucrative business where she can rent out space and they can do other things with it so I'm like kudos for Peter because he was the one that brought that into fruition and you know of course Cynthia just now taking uh uh, opportunity to expand and put things in there and she's having it and uh, for an event hall for anybody else that want to celebrate or promote their business or do commercials or anything she'll be willing to you know um, give them that space but they have to bring all their props and whatnot into it and make it theirs but she'll rent the space to them I don't know if it's uh you know economical or it's just real high say I don't know but yeah that was that uh stuff she was having uh promoting her new wine cellar and then the other part that they were in was just event space so that was real cute um then people started coming in to her event whatnot everybody that was supposed to be there was there itself for nini like i said and that was a shame because you know just because y'all was beefing or whatnot you know said that you could have did a little bit more you could have you know told her uh not just send her a call, but you would say, damn, let's put this aside. This is a, a monumental thing that I'm doing. I know you don't like me at this time, but hey, time progresses on. Things get a little lighter. We might come back together. And I don't want to say, you know, when we get with the ladies, oh, your event was this, your event was that. And then you're looking all crazy because I didn't really put the olive branch out for you to come on over. Now, if you, I put the, you know, um, if I put the, all the branch out and you decided not to do anything with it then you know it is what it is you know what i'm saying but at least it would have been out there off my brain no guilt uh trip being felt but uh she didn't do it and then he uh, sent her a little tray or whatnot and everything was kind of kosher after that point and it just played out the way it did actually play out and it was okay so uh this is what it is uh, but the main part and the piece of resistance that was shocking the shit out of me is, you know, Candy was foretold by Mike that he was going to uh, propose to Cynthia at this little event that she was having. He had made sure her mother was there, her sister was there, his mother was there, his children were there. And that, you know, I knew they I knew she was a good friend of yours and she would want to have you there with her excitement that I'm going to put to her but you know it's something very big very special and I don't want you to leave the event until this all over so she kind of got the clue you know women have that very good intuitive spirit intuitive spirit so she knew you know Cynthia had our the whole hell season half of 11 and all of 12 look like from what we've gotten thus far she's been thirsty 
You know what I'm saying? She want to marry Mike. She want to marry Mike. Oh, she getting ready for Mike. She getting ready for the uh, wedding proposal. She getting ready for the marriage. Uh, where it's going to take place. You know, it's just all been out on social media. So, I'm guessing before season 12, they had showed us, which we did hear about it. And it was during the taping. So, they caught it all on film. He ended up proposing. Well, he had told her that he... Well, Candy had pretty much figured out it was a proposal. Instead of Candy keeping her mouth shut, you know, like most women, we got to go to our girls, our ride or dies, and say, you know, hey, this is going to, you know, be a part of something. I think, you know, Mike's going to propose to um, Cynthia. So, you know, don't be surprised when you're here. But I think that's why everybody's here and stuff. So, you know, she said she texted that to Kenya, whatever. Bad move, bad move, bad move. Hey, you were better off just telling Tiny or people that in your circle like Carmen or uh, uh, what's his name Will D- uh, D1 uh, I don't forgot that boy's name um, her general manager Don Juan yes Don Juan you did better telling them and they kept secrets okay I'll talk amongst them against themselves but they're not in that circle that you roll so therefore <laughs> The tell Kenya more something when she already done ratted y'all out with that Porsche situation thing. You gonna trust her again on huh? Kenya? One time fool on me, two times fool on you, three times you out. But Ken don't look like she gonna be trusting Kenya anymore with telling her anything. Cause Kenya just went over there and burst up and told Cynthia, "Oh, I think Mike is gonna propose to you. I feel it all in my bones or my body. That's what gonna happen." Ken looked at her like, "Bitch, really?" Are you serious? And then you wonder why you ain't got no real love in your life. Okay, Ken. I mean, Kenya. But, honey, it was a hot, tripping mess. Candy was, Candy was too fit to be tired. She was like, girl, that, is that what you really wanted to say? I mean, she got all, her facial expressions told it all. It almost looked like she wanted to slap her for dear life. Like she was taking her last breath. And Candy was the only thing that had got on her nerves. <coughs> and she had to rectify that situation. And then Kenya going to be looking like, oh, did I do that? Like, her hand in her mouth. Woo! I'm like, girl, let me just take that hand and shove it down your throat because that's how I really felt. But, you know, Candy being as classy as she is and didn't want to go to jail, catch an assault case or whatnot. She just cussed her out in a polite way. Told Miss Kenya she ain't trusting her with no more good tea. She ain't telling her a goddamn thing. No more. No more. No more. Okay. And that was just, it just, that's why I had to get her the award. Because she showed up and showed out and put Kenya Moore in her place. And I'm like, damn, now that's how you damn do it. Marlo couldn't have did it no better. Nene couldn't even do it no better. You got her good. And she wasn't expecting that shit. And she was scared of Candy. Yes, she was. She looked at Candy like, oh, mm. I'm sorry. I, you didn't tell me not to tell anybody. You didn't say it was a secret. Damn, ain't nobody have to tell you. Do you have to say, oh, uh, somebody got to point you to the kitchen? You know, when you hungry? Nah, hell, you smell good food coming out of there. You're going to go with your nose. Or you know where the kitchen at. You're going to go and partake. Don't know how I need to tell you something like that to keep it on the hush, hush. Keep it on the low. Girl. I Candy did the right thing. She cussed her out in a sense and walked away from her. And I ain't never known nobody to walk away from Kenya Moore after they get in an argument. You know what I'm saying? Kenya be doing the walking away. But Candy like, uh-uh. girl, she was like, uh, I'm just too tired. I'm too tired of you. I can't even look at you no more. Ew, I cannot look at you no more. So she went and found her husband, Todd. They went outside. They talked about that shit. And Todd was like, damn, that was pretty foul. She gonna mess up her uh, engagement celebration like that. I don't know what to say, baby, but that was that, that was fucked up. That was wrong. She shouldn't have did that. She she shouldn't. I'm like, mm-hmm, but your wife brought her in. Okay, brought her back in, talked her up, and talked for her with the executives, and Cynthia did the same thing. And look what Kenya Moore is doing. Look, tearing them all up, telling all their business, and then thinks she going to laugh and kiki with them and everything going to be fine. Mm-mm, that's your worst enemy, the one that you always think. When do you wrong? Mm-mm, honey, them the ones be frying it up and trying to take your spot. And I'm telling you, Candy, she trying to come for you, baby. You better look, 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 look. You done brought back the devil himself, okay? 
and female form. She don't want nothing but your place candy. She already done said and put out there. She already know how much you made. So she gunning for it. She wants over that. Not your pay. She wants over your pay. I'm just saying, okay, I'm keeping it real. Wink, wink. You better learn. You better learn today, girl. But anyway, leaving that situation. Um, we go back. Um, the party is pretty much ending up or whatnot. Um, Mike comes up, you know, talking about he want to make a proposal. And, of course, everybody be like, ooh, proposal, like ring on finger, ooh, wedding uh, pronouncements and all this and stuff. And he's like, nah, I'm trying to tour. I'm trying to toast her up for all the accolades she has gotten. And wh- I'm so proud of her and this, that, and third. I'm like, Mike, give it up, baby. Go on and say what you got to say and leave it alone, okay? But anyway, he get, finally got around to apolog- uh, not apologize, uh, proposing to his thirsty wife, a uh, f- uh, future wife, and at first, I'm like, sister, stop playing, girl. You heard that, man. Just go on and swoop down and pick him up and say yes and call it a day, okay? Because I'm, I'm pretty much tired of the whole scenario myself. Let's have an ending to this already. Let's put it to rest, just like Portia putting it to rest with her and Dennis, okay? woo But anyway, leaving that whole entire situation. Um, let me see. Well, hell, let's just go on to the end because we don't talk too much about it anyway. We're going to get to a scene, the last and final scene where we got um, Kenya is riding to um, some kind of luncheon she's having with Todd and Candy as well as Mike. And no, not Mike. Who was it? Damn, I forgot that quick. Let me see. It was Kenya, Cynthia. Okay, that's what it was. It was Kenya and Mark and Todd and Candy and uh, the new newlyweds, uh, or potential, uh, not newlyweds, but, uh, damn, y'all know what I'm talking about, the fiancés getting together, um, Mike Hill and Cynthia, and so Candace and Todd are the first one to get there, and, you know, they're sitting talking, and this, that, and the third, and, uh, making, you know, a little banter here and there, and then you got, uh, Cynthia finally comes, and, you know, they're still making a little small banter and whatever, talking about the whole thing that happened at the, uh, Wine Beller Bailey opening and, uh, whatever, and then it seems like, uh, Kenya, not Kenya, uh, Candy and Cynthia was going to talk about how rude, um, Kenya was about trying to, you know, talk about the proposal when it could have happened that day and then it couldn't happen that day. And it seemed like they're going to talk against Kenya. That, that never happened, but it seemed like that's what it would have if they would have gave time permitting. But while they were there enjoying themselves, they were waiting on Kenya. And Kenya and Mark was coming and Mark was driving her a little, uh, I've got kind of, I don't know if it's a Telsa she's driving or whatever. It's the one with them flat uh, doors, suicide doors, my daughter say they're called. A uh, nice little vehicle, and you know, Mark was driving, and you know, kind of what do you call it, shade in Kenya in a way, because King would say some stuff that he wouldn't agree with, and he was shutting that shit down all day long. I was like loving every bit of it. I'm like, what you doing speeding in your car when you got the baby in the car too? That's should we alert highway patrol? Okay, should we alert highway patrol? You don't be going dipping and dodging and no, no, um. In Atlanta, driving that kind of craziness, and you certainly wouldn't do it up in New York. But anyway, she's like, "Oh, we go fast and stuff." He said, "Oh, so you're endangering my child?" <laughs> I was like, yes, she put her foot in her mouth there, Mark. Chastise her, please. And then she goes in to say, you know, she's talking about the events that happened at um, Cynthia's um, wine opening and how she got proposed to and this, that, and third. And she didn't really want to tell him, but it, she knew it was going to come up. So she was trying to put her little two cents in. And she said, yeah, um, I kind of told her that I felt that her fiancé or her boyfriend was going to propose to her. And he said, oh, so you bust the bubble. You let the cat out of the bag. You pretty much stole your friend's thunder is what you did. And I'm like, get on her ass, Ma. You know this woman too good. And he was not here for her antics of how she always try to make something that somebody else that celebration she tried to make it into her own thing and he's like it ain't about you you know he was just tearing her up from the floor up you know from the top of her head to the sole of her feet and i was loving every bit of it because i'm like that's right candy got your ass straight now it's time for more to get your ass straight on that situation everything is not about you you're not a center of attention you're not the bone carrier you don't drop certain t's out there can you and when people promote you and think you're doing this that and the third and that's good like kiki ha 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 
girl, we're going to see where you end up. Because if it's if Candy got you on, I'm pretty sure Candy and the rest of the team will get you off. So I'm like, girl, slow your roll. You're doing too, too much. Too, too much. Too much that what even Nene ain't even thought about doing. Now, we know Nene have done her dirt, too. But, damn. You know, I ain't never heard her telling no tea where it needs to be spilled or kept secret until, you know, the party knows about it. I ain't never seen her drop dime on some shit like that. But you, you don't got to. Mm-mm. You already told one stuff that stirred Portia up. Now, you done stirred um, Cynthia up about being proposed before her fiancé even said. Now, how reckless is that? But can't put you in your place honey and your husband was putting you in your place as y'all were driving to the event he didn't stop there either child he just pretty much said i'd rather be with needy than you <laughs> i was there here i was there for it i'm like i don't know a husbands and wives are supposed to take up for each other but somehow i don't know if they just wanted to push the drama but mark wasn't here for uh kenya he wasn't here for her at all not the marriage not the baby not anything and he was pretty much telling us hell this is a setup okay i'm trying to give y'all people some clues that this is fictitious all right this whole whole thing is fictitious it's a money playing role here but i ain't gonna let kenya get on my nerves and i'm gonna shut her down every time i get a chance if i feel she's you know uh saying something foul i'm going to bring her down i'm gonna call her out on her shit okay because he was right talking about kenya's kind of flash she like to flash yeah she does she does like to be in the limelight she loves people catering to her 24 7 and she loves to be out there showcasing and all that flossing and Lawson. he said i ain't with that i'm not you know it's just her and i'm trying to tell her to do it this way and you know you still gonna have a very nice outcome but it ain't for everybody to see not everything should be on front street and i'm like go on ahead mark get her toe get her toe man but pretty much that was it y'all he was shutting kenya ass down i mean everywhere he got a chance he was shutting her down i'm like i oh, see now that's what i'm talking about that is exactly coming she talking about she made one stupid um, uh, remark about uh, Mary and Mark was her second favorite thing. And you could tell it hurt his feelings. So I'm like, okay, so both of y'all, you know, he hurt your feelings. Then you'll say something to hurt his feelings. That's how we do it. That's boyfriend and girlfriend material. That's not wife and husband material. All okay? right. And she said something about Miss America was a very high point in her life. And I'm like. Like most other people, like, wouldn't it be your baby being the most hot? I mean, that's in your single life. You know what I'm saying? We don't mention that no more. You're a full-fledged, grown-ass, married woman. That would have been the highlight of your being, your essence, just having a child. Okay, that was your miracle, baby. What happened to all that, baby? That should have been your first. And then you could say, oh, in marriage comes my second first you know both of them are my first okay but if i had to say i you know just giving birth because i was always told i couldn't have a child it was very difficult for me to have a child i mean that's all you've been saying in social media since baby brooklyn been in this damn world okay okay that, that's all we've been hyping up baby brooklyn baby brooklyn baby brooklyn. and then you're gonna come out your mouth miss america was the best thing that happened to you at your girl get the fuck out of here okay i'm just saying i'm too fit to be tired with kenya and her antics i'm done with her she's gonna get rolled over every time that i can try to roll her over because i'm going by what she's showing me on the television okay i'm not speaking from a point i never met the woman in my life because i probably if i met her, i would say girl do you act like this in real life before i would even try to have a conversation with her and if she told me yeah i'm like bye okay i would be like bye so i thank candy burris for breaking it down she's our mvp uh she's sharing that honor with mr Mar- mrs marlo Ham- uh, miss marlo hampton and of course mark daly is always on the uh top of my list is saluting trying to put kenya in somebody's and some type of perspective place because she runs her mouth too recklessly and as we know candy has definitely called her on her shit twice so hopefully she knows not to mess with candy no more because candy take it on home and that would be some serious drama for us to partake of because i'll be like what go ahead girl what what, what you oh 
But, you know, I'll be just right there on the sideline just watching it go back and forth, back and forth. And I really know, really believe Candy would slaughter the hell out of uh, Kenya, okay, if things had to get to that point where they had to show who is the real young OG up on that Real Housewives of Atlanta camp. Yes, honey, we... Portia be her back up, I would say. <laughs> and Cynthia would be her next back up. And then he would probably be sitting up there with me, just looking at it fall out apart. Because Kenya wasn't here for that shit that Kenya did. And I was like, damn, well, Kenya should understand Mark's plight. But as Cynth- I mean, but as Kenya kept talking, running her mouth, even Kenya said in her confessionals, you would have thought Baby Brooklyn would have been her masterpiece. It would have been her a uh, piece of resistance of the best thing she ever did in this world or that came into her life because she's been talking about her all day long all every day okay but she didn't say that y'all i wonder what twirl team twirl think about that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but that's all i had for this video uh of the real housewives of atlanta that aired tonight the 22nd and the title was head over heels Season 12, Episode 8. Hopefully hopefully you all enjoyed it. Get down in the comments. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about today's episode. Not me, because I'm not on Front Street. I'm just bringing my tea to you all in my perspective, okay? Just tell me what y'all thought. If y'all didn't see it, I'm giving y'all that play-by-play. So watch the video. I ain't saying that. I ain't lying. And if you catch it, stream it, whatever. Y'all see what I'm saying. But y'all are free to make your own perspectives on subject matter. Y'all be blessed. Continue to subscribe to my channel. Let's grow together and remember to like and share like and share like and share my videos and definitely subscribe 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 happy holidays everybody and i'll see y'all next video Bye bye